Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your fourth episode in Industrial Craft. We're going to be going over a few of the more advanced machines today. To start off, we're going to be talking about the electrolyzer. Now, to make the electrolyzer, you're going to need some empty cells. They're made with four tin ingots, crafted like so. And then to make the actual electrolyzer, some copper cables, uh, an electronic circuit, machine block, and those empty cells. Now, the electrolyzer is a very entertaining item. What you're going to need is you're going to need some water cells. So, we'll just take a few empty cells here, run over to the water source, and right-click on it a couple of times, and it's just going to start giving us these nice water cells. Now, if I stick these water cells in here, not going to do anything. doesn't do anything by itself. You cannot put power into the electrolyzer. However, an MFE, an MFSU, I don't know if the bat box does it. I don't think so. Um, but if this thing gets over a certain amount of power in it, it will begin drawing it off into the electrolyzer. Think of it as a physical storage unit for power that's really, really cheap. There's about a 10% loss when you return the energy, but it's a dirt cheap method for storing power when you're only using tin and water. I'll be right back when it finishes filling. All right, and right around the 60% mark, the red lights on the side lit up. And as you can see, it is now drawing power. Well, you can't see it, but now you can. It is now drawing power off of the NMFE and transferring it into the water cell. Here in a minute, it's going to create an electrolyzed water cell. Remember that, because those electrolyzed water cells are used, especially in the nuclear reactor and the advanced upgrade that increases the speed of the machine. Okay, so a quick check, and no, the bad box will not do it. Now, there we go, one electrolyzed water cell. As you can see, it is still continuing. Now, as long as the MFE remains above 75%, the electrolyzer will draw off the excess energy, put it into the water cells, and for a total of 15,000 energy, minus 10% loss, you wind up with 13,500. Or, is that 1,350? No, 13,500 energy stored at about 10 per second. So you lose about 10%, um, but the electrolyzed water cells are very important later on. Uh, if the, However, if the MFE is less than 25% full, the electrolyzer will reverse the process and begin using the electrolyzed water cells to restore energy to the MFE or the MFSU. Next, I'm going to. Sh there is another way to fill water cells. You just put an empty cell into a pump, and I'll show you how to make it in a second. And a little bit of power, and it'll just start processing here. It'll suck the water up from uh, directly beneath it, and into the cell it goes. Now, here's the problem: it just spat it out into the world. As you can see, it doesn't really have anywhere to send it. In order to get the pump to send it into a storage device, you have to put a chest next to it, and it'll just stick it in the chest. It can be on top, it can be on the sides. Just make sure it's touching it, and everything will be fine. I'm just going to stick this in here just because shits and giggles. All right, now, the miner and the pump, two integral items to obtaining resources in industrial craft. First, you have the mining pipe. Go ahead and make yourself a stack of these, at least, if not more. You're going to need enough to get down to bedrock from wherever you put the miner, plus a few extra to make the miner and the pumps. You need six refined iron, arranged like so, and a tree tap. Makes you eight pipes. Now we have the miner itself, which is two pipes, a machine block, and two electronic circuits. Also, you're going to want to bring a pump, which is four empty cells, an electronic circuit, a machine block, a tree tap, and two more mining pipes. Now then, as for the miner, you're going to want to put a drill in the left slot, and the kind of drill does matter. A regular drill will not go as fast as a diamond drill, for instance. You also need to put mining pipes in the center slot, and it will use these to dig down. Once it gets to its maximum depth, you can then put cobblestone, dirt, whatever you want, in the top slot, and it will begin retracting the mining pipe using the cobblestone in its place. This will allow you to retrieve all of your mining pipes. You won't ever have to make more. Also, you're going to need a scanner of some kind. Put it here in the right slot, and I'll go over that in just a sec. The scanner determines the maximum range of ore finding that the miner can perform. Now, when the miner is digging down into the earth, it can occasionally run into water or lava. But mind you, this works the same way as the pump. You want to put a chest next to it for all those goodies to fall into, all the ores and stuff that it finds. And every single ore that it finds, it will put in that chest and dig up for you. It's a great tool. However, if it finds water or lava, it needs somewhere to put that. 
So in the pump here, if you stick it next to the miner and provide it with some empty cells, and of course you've got to provide them both with power, mind you, then it will suck the lava up and put it into that empty cell, which is great if you have a geothermal generator nearby because then you can just power it with the empty cells and you will get a lot of empty a lot of full lava cells if you find yourself a nice big lava lake now next thing you need to go over the scanners specifically the OD scanner to start now in order to construct the OD scanner you need three copper cables two electronic circuits an RE battery and some glowstone dust now when placed in the scanner the miner or sorry when the scanner is placed in the miner it will go down digging into the earth searching the area five by five around it the, the gold area here for ores if it finds them it will then proceed to dig to them harvest them and stick everything in the chest now there is an upgrade if you combine the OD scanner with an advanced circuit, three glowstone dust, and two more copper cables, you get the OV scanner. Mind you, this can also be done with a rechargeable battery. How in it does, however, need to have at least some charge. An empty battery, for some reason, doesn't quite work. Now, this one is much, much nicer because, as you can see, it scans a 9x9 nine nine area around the miner. You can get a lot of resources with a single go with this thing and just start running them along, the wor uh, along your world. They don't screw everything up. It just kind of digs down. It mines what it wants. And it'll only leave you a cobblestone pillar right in all the way down to the bedrock. Now then, we have a very important machine to talk about next called the Mass Fabricator. Now, the Mass Fabricator is a little bit expensive. It takes four glowstone dust, two advanced machine blocks, there's a video for that, check the links, there's a Lapotronic crystal, an advanced circuit, and two advanced circuits. Now, I've shown you how to make the advanced circuits, however, I don't think I showed you how to make the Lapotron crystal. Let's fix that. I'm gonna go through it all again just because. So you're going to need some ener an energy crystal here that's crafted with a diamond and eight redstone. A little bit expensive. This thing can store quite a bit of energy, though. You're also going to need an advanced circuit. That's one regular electronic circuit with two glowstone, two lapis, and four redstone. The lapis and the glowstone are interchangeable. They just need to be across from each other. Next, in order to create the actual Lapotron crystal, you're going to need two electronic circuits, your energy crystal from before, and the six lapis lazuli. Remember, any energy in here will be transferred over. However, when you use it in here, it will go away, so make sure you've got it in an MFSU or an MFE before you do this. To make the actual mass fabricator yourself, you're going to need the two advanced circuits, two advanced machines, check the previous video, and four glowstone dust around your Lapotron crystal. And what does that actually get you? Well, the Mass Fabricator is a wonderful piece of technology, and I'll show you how that works here in a second. But, armed with this new knowledge, let's go over how to make the MFE and the MFSU just really quick here. Now, in order to make the MFE, you need four energy crystals. Now, remember, the energy here is not transferred into the MFE, so you can't stick it on the ground and have it full of energy. Make sure they're empty before you use them. But in order to make the MFE, you need four energy crystals, a machine block, and four pieces of copper cable. The MFE can hold 600,000 energy, but remember, its output is 128 EU a tick. You're going to need to put a medium voltage transformer, which is just a copper cable, a machine block, and a copper cable, in order to convert that power down so you can put it into your basic machines. Next, we have the MFSU, which is capable of storing 10 million energy and emitting it at 512 EU a tick. Pretty impressive. Now, to make the MFSU, you're going to need six Lapotron crystals and an MFE with an advanced circuit and an advanced machine block. Bear in mind, that's 10 diamonds right there, so you better be prepared to fork it out a little bit if you want to make yourself an MFSU. Now, don't forget, you need to have the high voltage transformer, which is very expensive, a medium voltage transformer, plus an energy crystal, two copper cables, and an electronic circuit. But, you remember that from the first wiring tutorial? You have to have a, both a high voltage and a medium voltage to convert it down to low voltage before you can send it to your machines or you're going to blow shit up. Now, over here, I've got some voltage transformations here. It's not anything terribly impressive. Just a bunch of MFSUs full of about 2 million energy each. Now, when I flip this lever, it's going to start converting the energy down and begin sending it into the mass fabricator. And it will start making mass. 
Now, it's going to go pretty quickly here because I'm just dumping stupid amounts of energy into this thing. It takes about 2 million energy to make a single piece of mass. And I'm going to devote a video specifically to making the quantum nanosuit because that thing is hard. However, this is where that scrap I told you about in that either first or second video comes in very handy. Because when you put scrap in this bottom slot here, all of a sudden, you're consuming a hell of a lot less energy and making a hell of a lot more matter a hell of a lot faster. That was a lot of hells. Unfortunately, it will go through that scrap at a ridiculous pace. Now that we have that done, let's move on to one of the more entertaining machines. And that would be this thing. This is a magnetizer. Now, the magnetizer looks like a regular old machine block. However, if you provide it with a little bit of power... It'll consume a little bit at first, uh, and then it won't consume any energy unless someone steps near it wearing either iron or the quantum suits or bronze boots. They need to be metal boots of some kind. The quantum and the uh, nano suit both count for that. Now, if you get close to it, it shoots you up into the air just like so. Now, I'm bouncing a little bit, as you can see. It's not quite getting me all the way up to the top of this thing. It's not accelerating me all the way. That's because the electrical field that propels you all the way up only goes 20 blocks. Now, I can hold down the shift key here in order to stop it from bouncing really bad, which is very useful when you're trying to ascend to a specific level. So if I just hold the shift key, walk up to it, it's going to slowly take me up, nice and smooth, right up to that little, that 20 point right there. That's a pretty spiffy way to get around, and it's fun if you have the right equipment. Long trips can be a little bit weird, though. The uh, magnetizer will magnetize the iron blocks above and below it uh, by 20 blocks in each direction. Useful. How do you make it, you might ask? Well, we'll start with the iron fences. I believe you need a few. It takes six pieces of refined iron refi in the same pattern you would find for just a regular old fence. And then the magnetizer itself is just a machine block with two iron fences and some redstone. Very cheap if you want a really fancy and quick way of getting up and down. Now, the last piece of technology I'm going to show you in this video is the terraformer. Now, to construct a terraformer, you're first going to need an empty terraform blueprint. Now, to get one, you need an electronic circuit, an advanced circuit, and two pieces of redstone. Then, combine that empty terraforming blueprint with four bits of glowstone, an advanced machine block, and some dirt. We'll get you a terraformer. Now, the terraformer is a fun piece of technology. If you take one a terraforming blueprint, and I'll show you those in a second, and just stick it into the terraformer, and then provide it with power, it will begin to terraform the area. They've all got various ranges. You can see all this snow running around here. This is not a snow biome. That's one of the terraformers. That's one of the terraformers with a huge range. All right, first on the agenda, we've got the mycelium. Now, getting mycelium is not... No, you, normally you can't get it. Forestry will allow you to get it. You could spawn it in, but I'm not going to show you the recipe. you got to figure that one out for yourself. Provide it with a little bit of energy, and it'll start planting mushrooms and mycelium all around. And be, bear in mind, the mushrooms will grow on the mycelium naturally, even in the daylight. Over here, you can see my crappy job at extending the platform caused all of the dirt that was turned into sand by the desertification terraforming blueprint, which is just a regular blueprint and four bits of sand. It, well, gravity kicked in when it turned it into sand. Now, this one doesn't affect a huge area. It's, it's still pretty big, though. Then, we've got the snowy... or, I'm sorry, chilling... The chilling terraforming blueprint with four snowballs does exactly what you think it'd do. It turns ice into water and starts putting snow all over the place. We've also got a couple of other examples. Over here, you'll see that there's a few random dirt blocks lying around. At least they look random anyway. What it is, is this is the flatificator. Now, wherever you stick the flatificator, which is a TFPP with some dirt, the flatificator will begin to produce dirt at the same level as the terraformer in, in an attempt to flatten out the area. And as you can see, it extends quite a long range. So if you need something to flatten out a great big area for you, whether that be increasing the height of the world or decreasing the height of the world, the terraforming blueprint, the flatificator, will get your job done. 
Now, I, I should mention that the amount of work that is done here for every single one of these terraformers, I put an entire Lapotron crystal in there. One million units of energy, and I only got this much done. They will take as much energy as you can put into them, and they will process like the bejesus. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting area. You see all the mushrooms, and the pumpkin, and the planted wheat, and the grass. Well, that's because over here, we've got ourselves a cultivation. Four seeds around the TFPP gets you a cultivator, which will plant trees, and mushrooms, and grass, and flowers, and all kinds of fun stuff, including the occasional piece of wheat. And then last, but apparently not quite least, we've also got one that I'm not really sure what it does. However, I will notice note that it has turned quite a bit of the sand into dirt. I'm assuming that it just makes thing makes dirt wherever you are. And if you look on the mini map, you'll notice that the the range of this thing is something crazy. Anyway, in order to craft it, you need some water buckets around a TFBP. As for the it, what these things do after they finish terraforming the ground, well, if you want to find that one out, you're going to have to try it out for yourself. And look at how far out that snow biome worked. Holy crud nuggets. Anyway, this was Draconian. And in the next episode, we're going to go over upgrades, lasers, jetpacks, lap packs, tools, boots, and a solar helmet.